Hvala puno. Ja ću biti vrlo, vrlo, vrlo kratak. Neću produžiti dalje što treba. Da, prvo, prvo hvala Katarina i Katja da ste organizirali i ovaj kolokvi. Mislim, baš sam, baš sam bio impresioniran koliko ima tog neke, neke veze baš direktne između buja i, i ne vem, e, filozofskih problema i psihoanalitičkih koncepta e, danas, tako da, jer moram reći, nisam e, ja neko što ko bi, ko bi bio domać u buvijovoj, e, buvijovoj cijelotni priči. Kako da kažem, e, sad ću krenuti na engleskom, pa ću onda na kraju ne, u debati ću, ću pričati na, na e, e, hrvatsko-slovenačkom, kako se to, to reče. <laughs> Kojega, kojega je upravo, upravo mislim da Žižek izumio jer je negdje kazao da to jezik na, na kojem on priča je... Molim? Uh, yeah. yeah, I must apologize for changing the... Actually, as uh, Katarina announced uh, uh, the topic of my paper at the very last, Uh, and yes, I, I, as I already mentioned, Isofar, as I am not at all familiar neither with issues in contemporary popular mu music nor with the Buis one in particular. I was and still am able only to speak about Bui in the very superficial way. That's to say, in the way of choosing some particular events or facts concerning his life and career and analyze them in uh, much more general and uh, modest, uh, superficial context. Um, so that's why at the, at the beginning, when Katja invited me here to speak, I was about to speak um, on how a peculiar moment in Bowie's Bu life, the moment of um, uh, when he married his second wife, uh, Imam, in uh, 1992, actually represents uh, the shift uh, which is characteristic especially for Hollywood production. After new wave cinema in the 60s and 70s which consisted uh, mostly from criticizing capitalist society as inherently perverse by highlighting its uh, obscene other side. So beside, um, for example, um, uh, Pasolini's masterpiece Salo, which is a European film. The example here is um, uh, David Cronenberg's uh, movie Society, which ends up, as we know, with the orgy without copulation as Master Chief uh, penetrating the whole his body into the uh, into the back of the young pr practitioner in the. Uh, in, in his uh, in his company, I think so. So yeah, the the shift then uh, occurred in 90s and concerns precisely the re-establishment not only what Zizek calls the creation of the couple in Hollywood, but also of the re-establishment of the specific version of the figure of the father, which I would call a good father which role is to simply cover up the systemic dysfunctionality of capitalism after the crisis in the 70s and the increased financialization that followed. The most evident case here is the movie Wars of the Worlds in which the widower, the widower Tom Cruise protects his children from the aliens attacking the world. Aliens which are, of course, representatives of uh, deterritorialized financial capital as described, for instance, by Frederick Jameson, hence establishing himself as what I would uh, provisionally call a figure of the good father. 
so the, the, the figure that would somehow um, cover up the systemic uh, and total crisis of the system itself, uh, representing an alternative good case to for the for the identification, so that the that the guilt, so to speak, uh, cannot uh, cannot fall over the system as such. And at the beginning, it seemed to me that Bowie's biography somehow corresponds to this pe peculiar shift and could be actually read as a biography of Hollywood production. After the period of various kinds of personal experimentations, drugs, uh, uh, other things, including uh, sexuality, uh, in, in, in the period of 70s, in um, 1990s, uh, after his second marriage, he turned to become yeah, a kind of ex ex exemplary family man. <laughs> uh, also, by declaring that his uh, revealing of bisexuality in early period uh, was uh, a big mistake. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about something different, albeit equally modest. In short, uh, my presentation, in my presentation, I would like to benefit from the events following Boo is Dead uh, to explain the difference between panic and anxiety. That is to say, uh, between two concepts in psychoanalytic theory that are usually confound with each other or simply taken as synonymous, uh, which is also in part the case of Freud himself. Therefore, um, a new title would be something like, but it's uh, actually not important at this point, uh, after Boo is dead, panic, anxiety and group psychology reconsidered. So let me therefore begin with some data reported by tabloids and newspapers. New York Post wrote on January 12, 2016, two days after Bowie's death. I quote, David Bowie proves that is great for album sales. And end of quote, and the article then uh, continues. David Bowie set to achieve in death what he couldn't in life. A number one album in US charts. Black Star, the seventh song album that came out on Bowie's 69th birthday, just two days before his death, is skyrocketing on the top spot on the Billboard charts and is likely to edge out Adele's 25 this week. Billboard set, end of quote. Billboard itself, in its homepage, wrote on January 20, still uh, 2016, that is to say uh, 10 days after Bowie's death, quote, David Bowie's US music sales increase more than, attention, 5,000% in wake of death, end of quote. And then the last quote is from The Sun, uh, which is from uh, 2 January 2000, this year, 2017. And the quote is, actually it's the title, uh, vinyl sells up by 50% since David Bowie's death last January to highest level in 25 years, this increase of 50% equals uh, in absolute in total uh, 3.2 million million uh, records sold in 2016 oh, as i already mentioned i would like to consider these reports and data which all unambiguously show the codependence between boo is dead and the increasing number of products sold in the context in which i've been working on for already for uh, years now that is to say, in the context of Freud's issue with the concept of panic, especially in its, uh, in its difference with respect to that of, of anxiety. In fact, 
it could be said that from Freud on, the concept of panic was not only inextricably connected with that of anxiety, but also acquired an unambiguous meaning of the reaction of the members of the group in the moment when this very group or social bond in general is disintegrating. More specifically, in group psychology and the analysis of the ego, Freud, on the one hand, keeps speaking about, quote, panic anxiety. That is to say, he uses panic as, and anxiety as almost synonymous terms by tying them into a single concept. While, on the other hand, he insists upon consider, considering panic as a reaction which manifests the crisis of the group or social bond. As he puts it, I quote, the fact is, therefore, that panic anxiety presupposes a relaxation in the libidinal structure of the group and reacts to the relaxation in a justifiable manner. And the contrary view, that the libidinal, libidinal ties of the group are destroyed owing to anxiety in the face of the danger can be refuted. Some passages later, he continues, it is impossible to doubt that panic means the disintegration of a group. It involves the cessation of all the feelings of consideration which the member of the group, uh, group otherwise show one another." End of quote. While in the context of the disintegration of the army as a prototype of group which Freud is mostly interested in, the primacy of disintegration is somehow overshadowed by the reasonable fear against the enemy. Uh, in the functioning, however, of the uh, more common everyday groups, such as group of music fans certainly is, the reaction should be the same according to Freud, although in the case of the latter, uh, there is no physical enemy to thread the existence of its former members. In other words, the group should disintegrate itself once the point of identification falls down. Here is another quote from Freud which concerns again the case of army and it goes, I quote, the typical occasion of the outbreak of a panic is very much as it is represented in Nestroy's parody of Hebel's play about Judith and Holofernes. A soldier cries out, the general has lost his head, and thereupon all the Assyrians take to flight. The loss of the leader, in some sense, leader which is for Freud the, 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 the prototype of the uh, um, point of the identification. Uh, um, so yeah, the, the loss of the leader in one sense or other, the birth of misgivings about him brings the outbreak of panic, though the, the, the danger remains the same. The, all the, da the danger remains the same. The mutual ties between the members of the group disappear as a rule, as a rule. At the time, as the tie with, the, with, the, with their leader, end of quote. In this respect, it seems quite hard to understand how the death of a pop icon, in this case David Bowie, which obviously stands for the point of identification with the leader in Freud's account, that is to say the point co called Einer Einziger Zug, the unary trait, can result as a generator of the enforcement of the group rather than the cause of its disintegration. To resolve this Freud's deadlock, it is necessary to introduce conceptual difference between panic and anxiety. The difference which can, however, be extracted out of Freud himself. Here I center, certainly don't have the time to go more in detail, so I'll explain my point very briefly, just presenting the main thesis. While anxiety, on the one hand, can be regarded as a moment of irreversible disintegration, perhaps we could say also, uh, in Lacanian terms, uh, the point of subjective destitution. So yeah, of irreversible disintegration of social bond, panic, on the other hand, needs to be grasped, as Lacan said in his seminar on the names of the father, in terms of, I quote, 
one who panic in the face of anxiety, end of quote, that is to say as a reaction to anxiety. Yet this panic flight from anxiety is precisely the form of maintaining the minimum of social bond, rather than its complete disintegration. There are two principal ways of keeping the minimum of social tie alive neurotic phobia and perverse fetishism. While phobia consists from transforming undetermined anxiety, that is to say the fear from unknown threat, into the determined and therefore domesticated fear or phobia, uh, fetishism is all about avoiding the moment of anxiety but disavowing the moment of castration. Uh, the point here is that this disavowal by means of the construction of the fetish has precisely the shape of panic. As Freud himself says in the classical passage in the text on fetishism written in 1927, that is to say 60 year, years after group psychology, I quote, what happened therefore, I warn you a bit, it's, it's a bit... Um, how should I put it? Uh, it's the translation of Strachey. Uh, James Strachey, I think, uh, uh, from the, the, the early 20th century, so the English is quite um, uh, quite old one, it seemed to me. So, um, what happened, anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting, uh, and, and after that I'll come to the conclusion. What happened, therefore, was that the boy refused to take recognize, rec recognizance of the fact of having perceived that a woman does not possess a penis. No, that couldn't be true. For if a woman had been castrated, then his own possession of a penis was in danger. And against that, there rose in rebellion the portion of his narcissism which nature has as a precaution attached to that particular organ. In later life, a grown man may perhaps experience a similar attention, a similar panic when the cry goes up that throne and altar are in danger, and similar illogical consequences will ensue. Turning at this point to the case at issue, which is that of Bouvi's death, uh, and the events uh, that followed, can't we say that uh, something similar to this surplus panic reaction is going on in the case, in this case, insofar as his physical death actually enforces a group of fans uh, around uh, a group of fans around his icon. That is to say, his physical death even enforces by way of panic, fetishistic purchasing of his products, the communion which members identify with his name. And um, I, I can perhaps extend, if I know I have a few more minutes, um, th this is a part uh, um, which was not, not written yet uh, in, in this paper. I think the, 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 this point can be perhaps um, extended a bit um, to the situation which takes place uh, in uh, Lacan's uh, best known essay on uh, the logical time, um, in which, as we know, there are three prisoners. Uh, anyway, I, I'm not going to explain the case. Um, uh, all, all, all around. Um, so th the point there is that uh, the the the, um, the moment of identification it's always uh, precedes. It's before the the knowledge itself is somehow the the. And yeah, anticipates. Yeah, it's um, jump into the uh, into the abyss in in some sense. Uh, but, however, uh, uh, I think, because Lacan there is um, explicitly speaking that uh, what triggers the, the decision, and the, the decision which is at the same time anticipation uh, of the identification, is what he calls the 
um, ontological dimension of anxiety. Uh, this this is Lacan's term. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think the situation can be explained also in terms of uh, a panical running, a, a panic which is the mode of reacting to the uh, this uh, ontological dimension of uh, uh, of anxiety. Uh, yeah panic reaction which uh, by means of which uh, uh, the subject the not subject the not already subject the not subject yet at, at this point uh, one precisely tries precisely to escape the possibility that would somehow uh, remain left outside the Symbolic recognition, the, the the place in the in the symbolic order, the place in which uh, uh, amounts for the the yeah the, the sentence. This is me. Here I am. I in in Lacan's case, I am black or white. It doesn't matter. So but I would perhaps um, end up here, and uh, maybe we can further discuss. Uh, this in the Q&A's in discussion. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me.